My name is Philippa Stevenson. I'm curator of Divine Bodies. Divine Bodies is an exhibition at the Laying Art Gallery running until the 29th of September. We've brought together some of the finest old master paintings from the Hatton, the Laying and the Shipley galleries and we've put them together with contemporary and modern artworks from the last 30 years drawn from collections across the country. In this gallery we're looking at pain and transcendence. We're thinking about images of Christ and the saints but we're looking at ways that artists today have used the potency and the power of these images to influence the work that they create. This is a work by David LaChapelle. He's an American photographer and he takes photos of celebrities. It features the rapper Kanye West and it's from 2009. He calls himself the savior of hip hop. So what David LaChapelle has done here is taken that statement in a very literal way and he's shown Kanye West as Christ Le Chapelle perhaps questions the idea of celebrity worship, celebrity deification that's so prevalent in society today. One of the most important things about Divine Bodies is to show the old against the new, to show how old masterworks from hundreds of years ago continue to influence artists and society today. This is a prime example. It's by Hans Schäuferlein, a German artist working around the beginning of the 1500s. It shows Christ crowned with thorns. He's being taunted and beaten just before he's crucified. And the reason I put this so close to the Le Chapelle work is because it shows Christ's face in such a similar pose to the way that Le Chapelle has shown Kanye West. This is one of the newest exhibits in Divine Bodies. It's called Tree of Life from 2011 by Marlene Dumas. And what Dumas has done is shown the crucifixion of Christ, but she's, she's shown him at his, at his most vulnerable. It comes from a series where Dumas has explored the, the kind of the forsaken nature of, of the crucifixion and the, the, the final moments of Christ before he died where he's at his loneliest. Whereas with a picture such as this, Jacob de Witt's Christ on the Cross, which was created in the 1700s, we have a very different use of the crucifix. The artist has chosen to show Christ dramatized, his body is muscular and virile. There's none of this desperation and loneliness that, the, that this artist has chosen as a way to show the crucifixion. And I find this contrast so very interesting. This is a picture on loan from the National Gallery. It's from 1635 to 9, and it shows St. Francis in meditation by Francisco de Zerberan. What's very special about this painting is it shows an incredibly spiritual moment. This is the point where he finally receives communication with God. He receives the stigmata, the marks of, of Christ's passion. And Zerberan has managed to capture this extreme spirituality with absolutely beautiful detail. It's a religious image, but it goes beyond that, I think. It shows a, a real intensity of emotion, and that's why people can really connect with an image like St. Francis in Meditation. And the reason why I've chosen this picture by Marina Abramovich is to connect with the image of St. Francis in Meditation. This is from a series called Homage to St. Therese. Marina Abramovich has studied St. Therese and thought about the way that Therese dedicated her life to meditation, to understanding life and death in a similar way to how Marina herself dedicates her life to her art. And what I th find special about this is the way that she styled this in a very 17th century Baroque way. So she specifically said that she's inspired by Zerberan and other artists. And I've chosen to show this alongside a picture from the Hatton Collection. It's one of my favorite pictures. It shows Saint St. Francis again, but this time he's, he's supposedly in ecstasy, but his face is so ambiguous, we don't quite know what's going on. And I think that there's a real mystery behind this picture in a way that there is a real mystery behind a lot of old master pictures. This is a sculpture by Ron Newick, an Australian sculptor who currently works in England. It's from 2009 and it's called Youth. It shows a young boy who's being pierced or perhaps stabbed in the side. Newick is quite inspired by old master artists and what he's done here so brilliantly is he's combined religious imagery. It reminds us of the incredulity of Saint Thomas when he, he 
doesn't believe that Christ is risen until he can see the wound of Christ himself. But also at the same time, it reminds, reminds us of the lacerated uh, wounds at the side of, of Christ as he is crucified. What Muick has said about this piece is that it shows disillusionment and a sudden loss of childhood. We're very much aware of, of knife crime and how increasingly younger victims are becoming involved. Muick explores this through religious imagery um, in such a powerful way through his hyperrealist sculpture. Divine Bodies runs at the Laying Art Gallery until the 29th of September. It's a great opportunity for you to come and see some of our finest old master pictures in the region, also to explore some great contemporary and modern loans, along with some national gallery loans as well. We have an accompanying programme of talks and events for you to come and enjoy, so I hope to see you soon.